Hey, South Point, any followers of Jesus in our backyard? <laughs> hey, really cool thing. First of all, I know most of you are here, thank Jesus. But if you're watching and you haven't shared, or if you didn't share in that chair this service, it's is being live streamed. And so go preach the gospel with your phone right now and get on there and make sure that you share, especially this service. They need to see you. They need to see what they're missing today. And, uh, and so you, they need to say, get on your phone and share this service on your social media. You know what's really cool? What was his name? Tony. Tony, this morning, is here for the first time, I think. Maybe not the first time. First time ever. Came here, was out early, met some of our guys, Pastor Aaron, prayed with him to receive Jesus as Lord this morning. Is that not so cool? How cool is that? I was a little worried that he was going down his first time at church, but he came on. <laughs> and the Lord helped him. Listen, I want to um, get rid of this. Uh, but uh, I want to welcome all of you that are back since March. Honestly, sincerely, I know some people can't for various reasons. Uh, be here, but you're here today. I saw some of you. Welcome back. It's great to have you on the property. Really, it is. It's great to have you. Isn't it great to have the rest of our family here today? So thank you. I know I tease everybody all the time about not being here, but I do understand, really, and it's great to have you back. And then I met, and we didn't know. We didn't know in COVID if folks would come if somebody asked them, and my gosh, I have met folk everywhere around here that are here for the first time. I met um, one fella and some folks that they're with. He said, yeah, this is our first time here. I said, well, who invited you to the Big Reach One service? He goes, no one. We were just coming to church here today. We didn't know you were doing this. And uh, <laughs> so, he, so he's getting broke in in royal fashion. But welcome to all of you that are guests. And I hope that we can make an amazing experience for you today, that the whole moment is incredible. Um, hey, look, before I get into my message, and it's, it's brief. I know there's birds flying around and cars on the highway and children, and we're outside. And uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be brief, but I'm going to be amazing. All right? And so, 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 but before I do, I just want to tell you that I've just saw, I have decided, and I want you to just think about this with me to consider this. I have decided to join the cancel culture. I decided it's time for us to join the cancel culture. Now, let me tell you what the cancel culture is if you're not aware of it. It's a group of people with influence and power who have decided to use their influence and power to work to cut off resources from others that they don't like their agenda. And then they try to get other people to join them in cutting off those sources and of resources so that that agenda ceases to exist. That's the cancer culture out there. And I thought, you know, it's kind of driving me crazy to talk about all that kind of stuff or even think about all this stuff, except for one thing. I thought, I'm joining that culture. I want you to join me this morning in canceling the devil and all that he's trying to do in the earth. We, we need to quit giving him our time and we need to quit giving him our resources. We need to quit giving them our emotions. I want to cancel all the evil rhetoric out there that is bringing contempt and hatred for brothers and sisters all over our nation. I want to call a cancellation on it in Jesus' name. I want you to join me in that. Amen? It is time for that to stop. Quit giving it your time. Quit giving it your resources. Quit giving it your emotions. Quit giving it any kind of attention. Cancel it. Starve it out in the name of Jesus. Amen? Um, now, I also want to cancel... I want to cancel all of the Scrooge spirit that has somehow entered America, the Scrooge spirit that is anti-Christmas, and, and they're using all kinds of words with ism on the end of it to cancel Christmas. Well, I'm canceling you. If you are a Scrooge spirit with anti-Christmas, we are calling out a cancellation on that in Jesus' name. Amen? Throw some lights on your house and make your house smile in your neighborhood. Get a nativity scene and preach Jesus from your front yard. It's time. I'm canceling that Scrooge spirit. And who's going to join me in this cancellation this morning? <laughs> All right. Let's get into this Bible a little bit and, uh, and think about this. Um, I want to set it up for you the best I can. Uh, <clears throat> all through church history, and having a lot of guests here today, you'll go, yeah, I heard about that stuff. That's part of the reason I never come to your church or any other church. And uh, you'll hear about stuff like this. And all through church history, churches always <clears throat> try to decide what good behavior is and bad behavior. And, uh, and it gets real controversial, always. And um, so it, it, it's just always been there. It's here today in, in our world today. What's 
acceptable Christian behavior and what's not acceptable Christian behavior. What do Christians do? If you do that, you're not a good Christian. If you, if you don't do that, you're not a good Christian. All through history, that's gone on. And that was going on for Paul in this set of scriptures that I'm going to read here in a minute. Paul had seen a church be born into existence in Rome. The Roman church was filled with Gentiles and Jews. So it was filled with real religious people and people who weren't religious at all. So when they started having their church services and building their new young church, they would say, we're going to behave this way. And then people that were there going, no, 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 you can't behave that way. And then they would throw on the, the big thing. They would go, and if you're going to act that way, you're not a good Christian. Anybody know what I'm talking about? All through church history, churches wrestled with that, and we're going to wrestle with it until Jesus returns. All right? So they were trying to figure out, how, can you eat this if you go to the party? And, uh, you know, is it okay to eat that? Is it okay to drink this? And then some people would show up to the function and go, you can't eat and drink that here. Or if you eat and drink that, you're saying something that you don't really want to say. And there was this big argument that broke out in the church in Rome over what you could eat and what you could drink. All right, now there's a, there's a verse I have that's a little bit of fun for me because I, I received a little bit of backlash this week, last week about vegans. <clears throat> and I, I slipped. I meant to say that it, eating Vegan food was weird, but somehow I let the word idiot come out of my mouth, and I want to apologize for that right now because somebody called me up and I said, I heard you call me an idiot. I said, no, no, I said it was weird. He goes, I just listened to it, and you said I'm an idiot. I said, you know what? You're right. I'm sorry. I do think you're an idiot, but I meant to say that you're weird, all right? And so I, I, I want to apologize for that right now. And uh, so I do want to apologize to all you vegans and, uh, and, and that, uh, that I might have said something I didn't mean to say to you in that moment of time. But look at this verse. Look on the screens there if you don't have your Bible with you. Romans chapter 4, verses 1 through 2. <clears throat> Here's what it says. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. That's a lot of what happens in church history. They're quarreling over opinions, not the Bible. But then look what it says. Just so you know, I have scriptural precedent for my belief. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. <laughs> it's right there in the Holy Script of God. You're weak if you only eat vegetables. I can't help it. That's where I get this. It's, it's founded in the solid word of the living God. And everybody who believes you should eat meat said, yeah. Somebody said, you're not going to reach any vegans. I said, there ain't many of them. You know, we have an illustration of that now, and we'll jump into the scripture in Romans 14. So if you're at Romans 14, stay there. And um, we have a precedent for that today, though. You know what? It's behavior. It's behavior. You ready? We all go through it. Should you wear a mask or should you not wear a mask? There are people in Christianity who go, if you wear that mask, you're not showing faith. There are people who are saying, if you, wear, if you don't wear that mask, you're showing imprudence. And I have seen Christians get in fights over masks, whether to wear a mask or not wear a mask. They're literally, that is what was happening in Rome. They were fighting over something that was valid. There was a genuine concern about it. And, but they were fighting over it. I know right now you're going, which way were you, Russ? Well, I'm going to do what Paul did. Because Paul took it and said, look, I'm not going to tell you which one is right. If you should eat that or drink that when you're together. I'm not going to say which one is right. And I'm not going to say which one is right about the mask. Paul said, I want to show you a higher way of thinking. I want to show you a transcendent way of thinking when you get to these behavioral issues. He said, because the kingdom of God, verse 17, the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking. It's not mask or no, it's not mask or no mask. The kingdom of God is not that. Those are opinions. Those are issues. Those are things you're going to have to wrestle with and walk your way through as the church of the living God. But the kingdom of God is not that. The kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. So he's talking about a transcendent way of thinking. So what I'm going to do is take a very complicated verse. To do that theologically correct, I need about two hours. All right? And our food's going to get cold. And how many of you don't want that to happen? All right? Me either. And, uh, and so I'm going to extrapolate out deep concepts to practical applications to where they are right now today. 
A lot of times when somebody starts with the practical application and doesn't prove from Scripture why they believe that, there's a right to be suspicious. But I need you to give me some trust today that I understand what righteousness is theologically, I understand what peace is theologically, and I understand what joy in the Holy Spirit is theologically. But there's a practical application that means a lot to us today, and I give it three terms. I'm going to put them on the screen. Look at the screen right now. There's three things. One, in the kingdom of heaven, Paul says, things are right. Quote, unquote, right. I'm going to explain that. Things are right. Number two, in the kingdom of heaven, fear does not have the last word. And number three, there is a bright expectation for the future. That's what he's saying in righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. He's saying things are right, quote, unquote. Now, I'm going to explain that. He said things, uh, I'm sorry, that fear does not have the last word. We need to hear that today, and everybody said. And there is a bright expectation for the future. So let's jump into them one at a time. Let's go to the first one. Things are right. Now, if I jump off this stage right now head first and say I'll be right back, you're going to go, that ain't right. Because you're going to go, Russ, you jump off that stage head first. Not only will you not be back, we may never hear from you again. Because that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense for me to say I'm going to jump off head first and then get back up here and just talk to you like nothing happened. It is the absolute loss of all common sense. In the kingdom of heaven, Jesus says, Paul is saying, Things make sense. There are laws that you rule by and move by and live by, and those laws make sense of life. They are laws that make sense. In the kingdom of God, things are right. And in our world, things ain't right. Things are not right. I would say this is my word for behavior in our world today. Irrational. It's like they've lost, you're going, wait a minute, that doesn't, and I'm not going to go into any issues or anything like that. Just think about a lot of the things that you know about, people are talking about. You're going, what? That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. And it's because people decide what's right and wrong, all right, basically by how it feels. Number one, how it feels. How's it feel? We're big on that in America. How's it feel? Does it feel good? Then it's right. Does it feel bad? Then it's wrong. Everybody, are you hearing me out there? So it, it, it's, how does it feel? The second thing is, what is its immediate impact? Its immediate impact on the situation. Not long term. Don't think any farther than this. Just what's the immediate impact? If the immediate impact is good, then it's good. Everybody hearing me? All right, number three is the next way we choose what's right and wrong. What's everybody else say? I haven't sat around and thought about it much, so what's pretty much the majority of folks say is right and wrong? This is what we call, last time I'm going to use any big terms, all right, in an outside service. This is what we call moral relativism. It's, it's a way of deciding what is right and what's wrong that will get you into the chaos that our country is in right now. If you're going to decide what is right and wrong that way, I promise you we're headed to hell on earth, not heaven on earth. So what are we supposed to do? So in the kingdom of heaven, remember what the kingdom of heaven is? It's where what God wants done gets done. Where what, everybody say it with me. It's where what God wants done gets done. Everybody with me? It's where what God wants done gets done. It's where he's sovereign, where he's king, and where people obediently serve him. And so when we decide what's right and wrong, we go, well, how do we know what's right and wrong with him? Well, he's the creator. We accept that. And then we go, since he's the creator, he wrote a manual to show us how to live this life down here and how to determine right and wrong, which we call the 66 books of the, the Bible. And, and so we read our Bibles and we learn our Bibles and we study our Bibles. And then Paul said, in the kingdom of heaven, you'll be able to determine what's right and wrong first when you are reading the scriptures, studying the scriptures, and then learning what the creator said is how the world must work. And if you try to work the world in a way that the creator didn't make it, there's going to be hell on earth. If you try to work the world in the way that God made it, there'll be heaven on earth. Right and wrong is established by scripture. Now, here's the thing. The word righteous is a relational word, if you're going to be right. In other words, people will go, you ever had anybody come up and say, are you right with God? What are they saying? Is your relationship with God right? 
Are you right with your wife, brother? Are you right with your husband, sister? That's a relational word. When, we're, when you're living righteously, you're right in relationship. Righteousness is being right with God in relationship. Righteousness is being right with others in relationship. You have to understand, righteousness isn't a set of rules. It's a relational way. And in the kingdom of heaven, people are right with God first, and that walks into being right with one another. When the world's out there going, how come we're so screwed up and we can't get along and we can't seem to connect? There is no unity. There's chaos everywhere. It's because we're not right with God, and therefore we can't be right with one another. In the kingdom of heaven, we're right with God, and then we get right with one another. Is everybody with me? Number two, fear will not have the last word. In this world, there's going to be chaos, gang. This world has fallen. Now, I don't have time in an outside service to lay out a bunch of theology right now to tell you why that's true and why God would allow this and all the things that people want to ask in this moment. Just know this. That really doesn't matter. We're in a world that has chaos. We're in a world that there's going to be bone-crushing losses. Anybody hearing me? I got, I got a, we got a family that just lost their sister, and uh, she went on to be with Jesus. We got a, a family here in our church just lost their brother, 51 years old, went on to be with Jesus, and, and did, did just horrifying deaths and de bone-crushing losses. It's going to happen. There's going to be failures. People are going to hurt you. Things aren't going to go right. Some folk are going to get sick. I mean, in this fallen world, there's a lot of stuff that has gone wrong. There's a lot that's shaking out there. There's COVID for crying out loud. And everybody said. And so we're, when you see all of those things happen in the kingdom of not heaven, there becomes an uncertainty of everything. Because you see so many things wrong, you think, I'm, something's probably going to happen to me wrong. Or what if something happens to me wrong? And you live every day of your life wondering, when's my turn to go through something wrong? I'm not living through my time. I'm not trying to figure out when my time to go wrong is or when my time of wrong is. I'm not living that way. If it comes, it comes. Folks, that we're believers. Fear can't have the last word in our life. We can't go around being uncertain. We can't be afraid. That's why we're outside gathered here. Golly, there's probably 2,000 of us here today. Here we are. Here we are living for Jesus. You know what? Is there some risk in it? I guess. I mean, we tried to distance you the best we could. I loved it when one single brother said, man, I sat down and they took chairs away from me on both sides and I felt weird. So I went and found a family I could sit with. And, and, and uh, <laughs> you know, if you're single, you sit down and they take two chairs away from you. You're there all by yourself. You're kind of like, no one likes me here. And uh, so he found a family that liked him. Hallelujah. Smart guy. And um, need to find a woman though. But when there's all this uncertainty, you can start to let fear have the last word in your life. But in the kingdom of heaven, you know this. Jesus is your Lord, has numbered every hair in your head, knows every thought you'll ever have, knows what he's doing with your life. He knows where you're going to end up. He's got you. And when in the kingdom of heaven, there's this certainty and it brings peace. The kingdom of heaven is righteousness and peace. There's a peace that comes going. Might happen, but you know if it does, he'll take me through it. If I go in the valley, I'll get to the other side. If I go into the fire, I'm going through. If I go through the waters, I'm swimming on. I am going to go through. If he takes me home, better. I'm home with him. But there's no way that my end is not perfectly in fine line with his will for my life. And that gives me peace. Amen? So you know how people will say to you, I just want to help you say it better. And I, it's kind of weird to say it. I think it's the best way to say it in social settings. But you, some, you'll be going through something and people go, how are you doing? And you'll go, God's got this. God's got this. But here's what I like better. Maybe, maybe that's the best answer in a social setting. But here's the, here's the better private answer. God's got me. That's the best answer. God's got me. I don't want him to have this. I want him to have me so I can have peace. I want to get on that boat when it's flying around in the waves and have Jesus step up and go, peace be still. And the waves get done and I just run land up on the other side. I want to walk in peace. So however much hell this world brings, fear ain't going to have the last word in anybody's life in our backyard this morning. Amen? Number three. Number three. There's a bright expectation for the future. Bright expectation for the future. And... Um, you say, well, where do you come up with that one, enjoying the Holy Spirit? Well, let's, let's think about it. There's a lot of depression in this world. Everybody's down. It's just press on you, press you down, press you down, press you. How many of you have gone into Publix and forgot your mask? How many of you have returned to the car to go get that stupid mask? 
I don't know how many times I've got to all the way to the door and I'll see somebody walking out and I'll go, ah, oh, come on. And they got to go back to the car and they always, everybody's kind about it. Forgot your mask, didn't you? I said, yeah, I did. And uh, it's, what are you judging me? I'm, are you judging me? And uh, they go, no, I forget mine all the time too. It happens to me all the time. I said, oh, then peace, brother, peace. And uh, <laughs> thank you for caring for me. And uh, but so there's just this press and this press and there's, and uh, what about the future? And the kingdom of God, Paul says, there's a future, and I'm going to let you know there's a future that's bright. I'm going to give you something so that every day, no matter what you're going through, no matter how dark it is on the outside, I'm going to give you something that you're going to go, the future's bright. You go, God can do that for me? Yes, he can. He puts this thing inside you that is supernatural, church. Supernatural. It's called joy in the Holy Spirit. It doesn't come from out here. He puts something in you. It's a miracle. I don't even know. I've never known how to really describe joy. I've just experienced it. It's the experience of his presence deep down inside me. This river flowing, Jesus called it. Rivers of living water flowing. They're not coming from my circumstances. They're not coming from what's going bad or what's going good. They're coming from inside. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, fearing no evil, because the river of God is flowing inside of me. It's his presence in me. It is a miracle. And Paul said, in the kingdom of heaven, there's joy in the Holy Spirit. And so people are going through it, and you'll see a smile on their face. You know the foundation of fun? You know what the foundation is fun? We say it's actually, I hope it's not heresy, but we say all the time fun is a worship word, but we have a big thing behind that that needs to be explained. We don't think just having fun is fun. I was with our grandbabies last night. We were going around looking for Christmas lights, and they're all riding in the back of our pickup truck. And, and one of them said, we came up one of the houses where all the people were out there eating in their front yard and having a big time. They were all laughing and carrying on. Santa was out there. They had live music. It was real cool. And uh, one of my little grandbabies said, man, there's so much joy here. And I thought, well, I'm not sure where that joy comes from. I got an idea that those drinks are loaded. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I said, but, but what she was experiencing was somebody who was happy on the outside. Listen to me. Believers should always be happy on the outside because of what's going on on the inside. I'm not happy because we're all here. Well, I have to say this. I'm really happy to see all of you today. I almost started crying there at one point. I thought, man, there they all are. Thank God I have missed you. Whoa, my heart to see you all here worshiping God together. It does something for me. But my joy isn't this. It's in here. And so if you all hadn't come and said, I ain't coming, or if it had rained us out, I'd have had joy. It comes from within. The kingdom of heaven is righteousness. Things are right. Fear doesn't have the last word. And there's a bright expectation. If he's doing this for me, one day the sun is going to shine. The clouds are going to part. The battle is going to be over. And your victory is guaranteed. Everybody happy about that? You say, well, that's great. I want to be in the kingdom of heaven. Well, we said this last week. Or I'm sorry, two weeks ago. Pastor Ryan preached that grace message last week. The entrance to the kingdom of heaven is to surrender to the king. And make Jesus Lord of your life. So if you want to do that today, if you want to join our man, what was his name again? Tony? Do you want to join Tony? Come in and say, same day, brother. We came in the kingdom of God, same day. You want to join him, you're here today. Somebody asks you, go, man, I wish I could live like that. You can, but you got to make Jesus Lord. He's got to be king for the kingdom to work. He's got to be king. You got to crown him king. You need a savior. You can't be your own savior. You can't get there on your own. It won't work. You can't do it. You can't get good enough. We actually don't think we're better than you, believe it or not. We actually, we're talking about not being good enough. We've gotten saved and gotten our lives. We're living in the kingdom, struggling, just like you, fighting. We're not better than you, my friend. You say, you're born again. You're one of those Christians. I ain't. That doesn't make us better than you, just better off. So glad you're here. And maybe Jesus brought you here today for this moment right here. I'm going to pray a prayer, and then I'm going to ask you to pray it with me, everybody in this room, but if you prayed a room, <laughs> there's habit, everybody in our backyard, to pray this prayer. But if you're sitting out there going, I'm praying this for me, 
Others that know Jesus already are praying it for you. But you're going to be praying it for you, yourself. You pray it with all your heart. Simple little prayer. And if you mean this, Jesus is going to save you sitting right in that chair. And you'll have entrance into the kingdom of heaven. And then we're going to show you how to walk this thing out so you can have the life Paul was talking about. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So everybody in the room, if you'll bow your heads and pray this prayer with me. Room. I keep saying room. Outside in our backyard. Lord Jesus, I need a Savior. I need you, Lord. I give the best I can my life to you. I surrender. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Welcome me into your family. And then teach me how to live into the kingdom. I'm yours forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Now keep your heads bowed. Keep your heads bowed. No one looking around. I don't, all right? No one looking around. But if you're here and you just prayed that prayer for you, I'm not going to have you come to the front. I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to have you stand up. This is the only thing you're going to do. Would you lift your hand so I'll know? You say, I prayed that prayer. Lift it real high this morning and say, I made Jesus Lord of my life. All over. All over. Just keep them up for just a second so I can find you. It's a big crowd. All over. All over the property. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. All right, you can put them down. Thank you. Listen, if you raise your hand, we have a thing called the Grow Track. Starts next week, not today. It's called the Grow Track. And um, you go on the Grow Track. Pastor Ryan, help me. Is it still live and so live at noon? Yes, I'm sorry. It's, it's 11 o'clock. It's live up in room 241. And then you can go Zoom at 1230. You just go to the website, and you can find out where to go or go to our app, and you can find all of that out. Amen? Amen. All right. We're going to receive the Sunday morning tithes and offerings, and then we're going to sing a song. Amen? And, uh, and so we're, you're going to love this. I, I've been wanting to sing this song with all of you here for a, long, <laughs> for a few weeks now. I thought this song is perfect to end for a moment. We're going to see the offering. So if you get out your phones and uh, prepare yourself to give. If you're a guest this morning, relax. I know you say, you got me here to give? No, no, no. If you want to, you go ahead, but that's not where, we're just glad you're here. You're our guest this morning. In fact, we're going to try to make sure we figure out a way to get you in line first because I think there's too many people here. Hallelujah. So, so <laughs> I need some of the South Point family to wait to eat till the end. You may need to go home and find your food, all right? So, and, uh, but that's a good thing, and everybody said... Hallelujah. That's a good thing. So let's make sure our guests get a good meal and, uh, before we go on. But um, there's three ways to give. You can use our app. Um, you can go online and uh, text South Point CCC to our CC uh, to uh, 77977. Um, or you can give cash um, or a check if you want to. Uh, the receptacle's back there somewhere, aren't they? Jay, they're back there somewhere. I don't know in this setup where they are. And you just dump them off in there, and we appreciate that so much. Let me pray over your offering. And then we're going to set up and have a time to give God praise for all that he's doing for us. Then Jason's going to lead us into the next part of this. We're going to get some food and fellowship. And just in case they, I don't know if they do, but these chairs, once we're done, these chairs are your things to eat with. If you want, you go get them and take them wherever you want, not home, not home, but you can move them all around the property, circle up with the people you want to be with. The tents are back there if you want to sit at tables with your family. So all of that's there. They'll tell you about all of that stuff. Um, but one thing, gang, I'm going to say to reinforce what they're going to say. I know how some people feel about masks, but when you get in line, I need you to put them on for the sake of those who think it's very, very important. And you're going, I don't believe in that. I need you to believe in it while you're in line. Let's think up here. And right, and so think up here. You go, and I'm not caving into anything. And there's Matt, if you didn't bring one, we have them back there for you. They'll tell you about this again, but I wanted to reinforce that. And uh, just let's, let's not make it difficult for everybody in some weird behavioral trait. Let's love each other. And everybody said, amen. amen. And then the rest of the time you do like you've been doing all day. Father God, bless this offering. As people give, sanctify it, multiply it to meet all the needs that we have. But the Lord, especially as they give, bless them. I pray that as they sow this seed, that it falls down into good soil. Lord God, and comes back in a manful harvest to them, flowing over and over and over again. Bless them as they obey you and give out of love to worship you with their resources. Bless it in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.
I'll get this out of everybody's way. Somebody's going to get that. All right. Stand to your feet. We're going to sing a song that I like. I, now, from the front to the back, this ain't over. Everybody said. <laughs> we, got, we got prizes to give away, songs to sing. We got things to do. We got live entertainment. We got pork sandwiches. I know some of you offended by that. And, uh, but then we got beef sandwiches. Some of you offended by that. We got hot dogs. Some of you offended by that. The rest of you, you get all the grass off the ground you want and eat all you want all day long. Bless you guys. Let's sing and worship. Man, wasn't that a good word? Isn't it good to be under the sky worshiping together? You. We worship you. Why don't you just go ahead and just start worshiping him right now, wherever you are. Just tell him great things about himself. There's no one like you, Jesus. There's no one like you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your kingdom. Yeah. We worship you. Ooh. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Yeah. The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait in you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Come on, sing it again. The Lord is my light and salvation. Who shall I fear? Shall I be afraid? The Lord, the Lord is my life. Who shall I fear? Who shall I fear? Who shall I be afraid? of the Lord. Come on, I hear you. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. The Lord is my light and sound. Who shall I be? Who shall I be? Hey. Who shall I be?
I will see the goodness of the Lord. Come on, church, sing out again. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Yes, this is our message to see. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Give him a praise. Come on, give him a shout. Give him a shout. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Y'all, we outside. We outside. There's no ceiling. So I don't know about you, but I was curious. I was wondering, how loud could we get? I don't know. We've never done this. Do you kind of want to know? I want to know. I want to know what a righteous, holy people sound like praising their king with no restraints. With no restraints. So can, I'm going to count to three. Can we just give the biggest praise that we could, that we can? Can we do that? Can we do that? I need to hear it all the way in the back. Can we do that? Can we do that? One, two, three, praise the Lord! Hallelujah! Yeah, baby. Take that, COVID-19. I want to make sure there, I'm not going to do names. I can't. Literally, it's somewhere in the hundreds. It's, a, it's over 100. But there are people that have prepared 1,250 box lunches, people that have worked putting all this together, people that were here at 7 in the morning to set up chairs, people that have set up tents, made coffee. I mean to tell you, for me, I think Jesus, looking down at SCC, going, look at my bride. And I'm so proud of all of you that served. I hope you feel great. When you go home and you're tired, get you a nap. But I hope you feel great about who you are, because I feel great about who you are. Thank you, everybody. Bless you. Pastor Jason going to get us to the food. How many of you ready for the food line? or whatever he's gonna do, Jason's gonna do something. Let's welcome Pastor Jason, who ran a lot of this and made a lot of this happen. Can we welcome Jason?